the ducks it's simon here welcome back to the hermit's cave um i just thought i'd come on this won't be a very long video um but i recently got the buddha tarot the second edition buddha tarot and i've come on a bit of a journey um with this deck so a little bit of a backstory first of all the buddha tarot is by robert m place and i love robert m place decks particularly um, what he's putting out at the moment with his own publishing company, which is uh, Hermes. And he's redoing all of his old decks like Tower of the Sevenfold Mystery, which is my absolute favorite. Um, Alchemical Tarot, we've got the Magnum Opus and the Alchemical Marseille. Um, I don't know if he's doing any more in these kind of designs with this, this fabric box. But the quality of these decks are absolutely beautiful. I was very lucky with the Vampire Tarot because um, I was able to get that off uh, eBay just as it went out of print and before people realised it went out of print. I got it for like £30 sealed and I just couldn't believe my luck because after I bought it I heard that it was out of print. So. Um, and there's something about a Robert M. Place deck, the um, use of the sharp line work, the use of colour, um, quite simplistic, even though it can be dependent on the subject, like Buddhism or um, alchemy, it can be quite complex. Um, but there is a simplicity to the artwork, which I really, really appreciate. So I'm a huge fan of Robert M. Place and his decks. Now, even though I got lucky with the Vampire Tarot, I was even luckier with the Buddha Tarot because for about two years I was searching for this deck. I could see it going for lots of money on auction sites. And I just kind of resigned myself to the fact that I would never get the Buddha Tarot. And then one day I was literally downstairs. So I live in, in a, an apartment block that's on top of a shopping mall and exactly below me and i mean exactly below me uh, is my friend stand who they do crystals lysian mentioned them before i filmed at their stand and i was just chatting to them one day and i looked up to the furthest corner of their shop right on the top shelf and there was this deck and i just couldn't believe it so um i bought it it's not a set that comes with the large book hence a reason why I wanted to get this uh, new edition. Um, and also just because of this packaging. So this is originally released by Llewellyn um, and it was when Llewellyn did these awful um, cardboard boxes that are just, uh, I don't know what they were thinking. Um, but um, yeah, so, so that's the story with the Buddha Tarot was the fact that I, I you know, it's almost like the um, the story of the alchemist, which is my favourite favourite book ever. That you can go around um, traveling the world if you want to, trying to find a certain treasure, but actually it can be right under your nose. And this literally was uh, right under my nose. So I stopped looking, and the universe provided. Um, so anyway, let's just look at, and I'm, I've got a video walkthrough of this, so I'm not going to, this video isn't a walkthrough video, um, it's just to really show you um, the two editions. If you have the first edition, you're probably thinking, well, I don't need the second edition, or maybe you weren't able to ever get this, so you're now complete, uh, contemplating getting this, or it could be that this is the first time you're even aware of the Buddha Tarot. Um, so, I just want to kind of show you the differences. So as I mentioned, firstly, let's just put the new edition to one side. Um, the packaging, uh, as I mentioned, it's by Llewellyn, as you can see here. Um, and it's just in this crappy uh, cardboard box. On the inside, this bag didn't come with it. This bag was a beautiful, um, kind and generous gift. Uh, from somebody in the community and this is 100% pure silk I think it even says it uh, yeah 100% silk made in Nepal um, and he sent me this he said I think your Buddha Tarot is crying out for this 
um, pouch, so he was very kind. All you got with this edition, but there was there was a version as well, to be fair, which did come with a big book, but um, I was lucky enough to get this, let alone that one. But this was a, an okay little book as far as a little white books go. There's quite a lot of information packed into here actually, um, but not as much as you would get with, with the book. Then we had this weird cardboard, make your own storage box. Um, and a few decks came with these contraptions, but it was pointless because these are small cards. Um, these are like the old Llewellyn, and even if you put it in here, they just fell about anyway. So, um, so yeah, they were small cards. So that was pretty uh, redundant. Let's try and place them flat because they are slippy, these cards. And then you've got a caring for your cards, which was, you tore this off, it was perforated. It was all stuck together and you just removed that bit. And there was an extra card here, which was a nine card spread. Querent, relationship, other person or thing. And it was a relationship spread, very random, but. So there you have it, that's what you got. Um, with the original kit if you got the kit that didn't have the large uh but i could probably throw this away i don't even know why i kept onto it really because it doesn't even sit in the box that nicely and now i've got this pouch um this is what i've been keeping them in i have just before hitting record button put all these in order as well just to make it easier now what i did want to say is with the original I quite like the size. They're not as big as a US Games um, MPC size, I don't think. A little bit shorter, um, and that is kind of, you know, the Llewellyn, uh, Los Scarabeo uh, size. US Games are a little bit generous when it comes, and MPC. Um, cardstock isn't brilliant. I mean, it's not bad. Um, they do have a sheen, they are quite glossy, um, but I don't know if you can see here, it has bowed a little bit, this uh, this deck. But it's lovely to shuffle, it's lovely to hold in the hands. The new edition that I'm about to show you, the cards are larger. So let's put that pouch to one side. And then, so here we have the, the new Buddha Tarot. Uh, and it says a mandala of cards, Robert M. Place. Now, this is by uh, published by Red Feather, which is a an arm of Schiffer. And Schiffer, in my opinion, where they come out on tops is their packaging. Their packaging has always been lovely. Even those hard boxes with the ribbons at the sides to stop the spine from splitting. They do put a lot of care and attention into uh, their packaging. And you can see here, hoping the sun is picking that up. The box is beautiful. It's really nice. This is a heavy, heavy deck because it's got a big thick book in there. Um, and on the sides, it says the Buddha Tarot in different designs. And then it is magnetic, as you can see here, and it opens up. We've got the Buddhist wheel here, the Lotus. Um, and it closes beautifully. It's quite a strong magnet, actually. I don't think even tipping on its side, that's gonna, that's gonna undo. It's really, really nice. Okay, and then we get the write-up on the back. I'm not gonna read it all. The ancient philosophers and alchemists taught that the highest wisdom is to see the patterns that are timeless. This is what happened to Siddhartha as he, under, uh, as he sat under the Bodhi tree. He saw the pattern of all incarnations like a great wheel and became the Buddha, the enlightened one. Um, if you are interested in reading the story of the Buddha, I can honestly say, and it was written as a novel, um, but Deepak Chopra's Buddha is phenomenal. I absolutely love it. And I recommend that to everyone, even if you've not got an interest in Buddhism, just to read a story, a novel of the life of the Buddha, it, uh, of the Buddha, life of the Buddha. It's, um, 
it's historical, you know, he did a lot of research, even though it's a novel. Um, but it's, it's a fantastic read and I read it probably about 15 years ago. And I couldn't pull it down. I really, really loved it and highly recommend it. Um, so anyway, that's the, the box. And as you can see, the magnet is so strong on this. It's really, really sturdy. That's just the in, you know, the top part of the cover. So I'm just going to move the original cards to this side. I want everything to fit in okay. So this is a chunky monkey of a book. We have colour renditions of the cards. And you get, I mean, this is Robert M. Place, you know. He's, he is known for his tomes. Um, you get quite a lot of information. Um, and again, this is why I really wanted to get this set um, because of, you know, listening, uh, listening, reading his, his words and gaining wisdom. Um, there's a lot of information in this book. Be easier probably if we go to the um, contents page. I mean, look at all this. We have the foreword and the preface. I love that quote. All that we are arises with our thoughts. With our thoughts, we make the world. And there's a quote by um, Leonardo da Vinci as well. Among the great things which are to be found amongst us, the being of nothingness is the greatest. Uh, connection between the East and the West. Um, you know, Buddhism is historically an Eastern tradition which travelled, travelled across Asia and then into the West. Um, so yeah, there's lots of information in this book. Now, it's not a traditional tarot as in, um, you know, when we talk about, I do wish they'd put some little ribbons in here though to help get the, uh, the cards out because I don't want the cards to get damaged. Um, and we get this two part separation again. I understand why, because this is a thick deck and this is a thick book. So it's got to be packaged some way so that it's not taking up a huge amount of space um, on your shelf. It's not gilded. I thought it might be because a lot of the new decks that are uh, coming out from Schiffer Red Feather are gilded um, again you can see the separation point because the deck has been split i know this once shuffled you know it might rectify that um but it's it's just something i don't know how i don't have a suggestion so if i don't have a suggestion shut up <laughs> um i do worry that these cards might bend a bit because that one seems a little bit uh misshapen but it's just I think it's just the way it's kind of sat. It's a huge deck. It's chunky. Compare it with this um, in terms of thickness, even though they're different sizes, you can see the, the difference in cardstock. The backs, we've got the same design. The only difference is we have a borderless back on the new edition. And on the old edition, we have um, a white and blue border. So we have a double border going on there from the Llewellyn version. Size is a big difference, as you can see. That might be off-putting for some people who, who like smaller cards. Um, it's not for me, This, even though it's a, a, a big deck, um, it's not off-putting for me because with my big hands, I can still, it takes a lot to get your hand around it. I probably have to shuffle it that way but it's a big deck. But it allows the image to be expanded and for you to really see more information. Another difference is the titles. So on the new edition, we get the title on the, the side of the card, whereas on the Llewellyn version, we've got it at the bottom here. We get the same information though. So it is, almost like um, telling you a little bit about the card as well. So 
here for our emperor card, we've got Siddhartha, um, the future emperor. And when we get to the minors, uh, particularly, uh, oops, don't get them out of order. We get a little bit about who people are on the cards, which, which is helpful. You don't always have to go run into to the book for that. Um, and then the most noticeable difference is the card stock. So this is a matte card finish, no lamination whatsoever. It is card, um, whereas this one has a kind of a plasticky feel. It's laminated card stock, but it kind of kind of feels a little bit plasticky. Um, I think I think I still would carry this one around with me in the little in the little bag. I'm thrilled to have this version because you know it, there's a lot of image to to look at. Yes, it's a pip deck in case you've just noticed that. And when I said it's not your traditional tarot, it isn't. Most, if not all, of the cards. It will give reference, so you can see here that it's the fall. Um, but it will say the descent from to see to heaven. Um, but again, having having this book to go to our fall, and I've just opened it up. And look where the cards start, page 110. So you get all this information before you even get, uh, even about hermeticism, I just saw there, um, even before you get to, um, there it is. Which is typical of uh, of Robert M. Place, and I mean that in a good way, in a good sense. Um, so yeah, 110 pages in before you even get to the cards. There's a lot of information here, and you can read up about um, the stories that are being depicted within the images in these cards. Let me make sure that I'm off centre. I've just realised I'm really off centre. Um, so as I said, it's not really a walkthrough. It was just to show the differences. Um, but I just want to have a quick a quick look at how these images are are coming across. We do get the signature here. Um, I mean, you get them. I don't know if you can see that, but within the artwork here, um, Robert M. Place's signature. But here, it's kind of within the border. So both decks are borderless. Uh, sorry, both decks are bordered until, was it, uh, no, that's the difference of the border. This is something that I kind of, um, you know, a little bit disappointed about. Because when you get to your minors, they are colour coded, which I found to be quite useful. So the Vajras, which we have here, they replace the uh, the swords because it's representing air and they have a blue uh, border. So you can kind of see what suits they belong to. So the white ones are obviously the majors. Um, here for the jewels, the jewels are the earth um, suit. So representing, you know, pentacles or, or coins. Then we have lotuses, Lotus lotuses are our fire um, suit, so our one suit, and then we have the green, uh, which is the double Vadras. So we have Vadras, jewels, uh, lotuses, and double Vadras, which is our water suit, which is, of course would be would be cups. So I quite liked having the color coded, whereas in this deck, all the way through, we have the black borders some people will really appreciate that you know for uniformity particularly with this deck not being gilded i could imagine some people would want to edge it in black because of the black borders i think it would look quite quite nice um to have that again that's going to be down to to personal personal choice so I'm just gonna flip through some of the cards just so you can see uh, the difference that we have here. There is some nudity, um, but it is what it is. It's not anything that uh, particularly bothers me. We have the father here, 
which is the Hierophant card. The lovers is beautiful. It's a daughter and his wife. Who he and he left his wife and child to go out in the pursuit. If you don't know the the story of the Buddha, kind of takes shape here actually, because he was protected uh, within the palace confines. He was a Hindu prince, and um, because of a prophecy, he was he was protected, and he never he never left the palace confines, the walls. And then one day he did, and he saw somebody who was sick, he saw somebody who was old, he saw a corpse, and he realized that these are the things that he'd never been told about and never considered, that he could get sick or he could get old and he would die. So his search was to find um, something to change that, immortality. He went uh, and tried many, many things. Um, to try and find an end to suffering as he as he saw it. And that's when he uh, found enlightenment, became the historical Buddha under the Bodhi tree. Siddhartha cuts his hair, that's the strength card. And there we have the suffering man with his sores and everything here. Um, the colors are a little bit richer in the smaller um, Llewellyn deck. I'm not sure how well that's picking up, particularly if you see the green leaves at the top. It could be more to do with the fact that this has a lamination and this is printed onto card. And then we have the corpse, which is there to represent death. I love this death. There you go. Um, the middle path for temperance. You'd expect the middle path to be the temperance card. Mara is the Buddhist devil. Um, so we have Mara here trying to tempt. Beautiful. Oh, oh, I mean, both versions are, are gorgeous. Here we have the full moon. Buddha and Shakti. First sermon, and we have the world. Now, after the world, we do get card 22, which is Parinirvana. So that beyond the world, we have an, a state of Nirvana, or Nirvana, as I think it's pronounced in, in the States. And then we go into our, um, Miners, our suits, and as I said, they are they are pip. Um, so we have the Vajras. So nothing has really changed, other than the, we we've gone from having coloured borders to black borders. The titles are on the left hand side rather than at the bottom, and you're getting more image. Well, not more image, but you're seeing seeing it larger. This deck has been out of print for a long time, so I'm just I'm just pleased it's back. I'm pleased that Red Feather have picked this up. Um, now, when we get to the courts, they follow the same structure in each suit. So we have the Dakinis. So this is the Dakini of Vadras because it belongs to the Vadras. Then we get the animal. So the animal of Vadras. And then we have the Shaktis of the suits, in this case, Vajras, and then the Buddha. Okay, so the Buddha takes our king uh, slot. I love how we brought in the animal here as well from the suit. So then we have Jules, which is the earth suit. And that's quite easy to remember because um, you know, jewels are, are crystals, they are stones, they are minerals, etc. And they, uh, they've come from, from the earth. So it's always, it always feels very earthy. A 
said this wasn't going to be a walkthrough and I've ended up, but I'm not talking about each each card because I'll try and remember to um, list it below. Now I do like the coloration here as well, especially on the skin tone, this is very yellow where this is toned down um, a little bit. So again, we have our Dakini, we have our, ha our animal, which is a horse in this case. Then we have the Shakti and then we have the Buddha. And again, it's bringing in the animal of that suit or both the Shakti and the Buddha actually. Lotuses, I'll just go through these quickly. Kind of reminds me of how Robert M. Place has done the uh, Marseille with having pips but illustrations incorpor incorporated as well. It's a peacock, beautiful peacock. You'd kind of expect the peacock to be in this deck, wouldn't you? And then our final um, suit is the double badgers, which is the water suit, which would be cups. <laughs> Got lots of associations with water here. Okay, and then our final courts, the Dakini, the Garuda. Our Shakti, that looks like, yeah, I was gonna say that's green Tara. It just says Tara here, but it's green Tara. And then our Buddha. So there you have it, that's both decks um, side by side. The original, much smaller Llewellyn version. In fact, I don't know if it tells you here what year um, that came out, 2005. So this was out in 2005. This, even though it was, I think released earlier this year, has got a 2021 uh, publishing date on it. So 16 years later um, from Red Feather, we have this this edition and I think they've done a really nice job a really nice job I know some people will struggle the size uh, and handling this because it is like I say a really a really big deck um, kind of reminds me of the difference between the urban tarot from a deck that's like almost like a playing card size this does bow though you know, playing card size, which is very easy, he says, very easy to um, to shuffle. Whereas this deck is going to take quite a bit of work. Probably have to, as I mentioned, probably have to do it that way. Might be easier to shuffle it that way. All right, but thank you for watching. Let me know your thoughts. Do you have either deck? Uh, which do you prefer? And yeah, thanks. I will be back, if not before, what day are we on? We're on Thursday. We've been off work, I don't know what, what day I'm on, but I will be back on Saturday anyway at 7 p.m. for a live chat, the usual cup of ketchup and card. So I'll hopefully see you then. So until next time, go in peace. Namaste and blessed be.